as I said, we, we learned about you uh, from a mapping survey that was done, and we're trying to get all of the properties on this side of the river. Yeah. This used to be waterfront. Yes. Uh, yeah, how did you find that out? <laughs> um, well, I had a business here in 1986, so... Oh, you did? Yeah. Right below Laugh Lines on the corner of Columbia and Forest. Oh, oh tell me about that. Yeah, it's called, it was called Midland Liquidators. And Mid Midland what? Midland Liquidators. We were a company that bought companies out that were going under and resell, resell their stuff. I any limit to what kind of company you would buy? No, we bought toilet paper even. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> How would you find out someone was in trouble? Oh, let's see. We got well known enough that people would phone us. And and we had connections with banks and all that kind of stuff. So we bought whatever. It didn't matter what it was. We bought it. And, and then how did that lead to laugh lines? Well, no, that's just how I know about the, the, the newest minister. Oh, I, I get here. You. And I get basically you. I know that this side here uh, is, is why uh, this side was lower. And then they built up and then everything burnt down. <laughs> so were you here for the entire development of the waterfront forward? No. No. Oh. I'm not that old. You, <laughs> well, I just got here, so yeah. this is all news to me. Yeah, it was done It was done back in, uh, like this building was built in 1927, so it was done before that because there was a building here before that that burnt down. The only thing I don't know is what was actually on this place. I should find that out. Oh, no kidding, because this is the photograph that we, we got out of a book and we've shown people and tried to pinpoint, hey, where are you on this map? And obviously we know where you are on yeah, this but this map. Is, yeah, and this is probably the 1960s. I, that's, I'm not even uh, looking at exactly it. That's exactly right. I didn't even look at the, record, uh, the, yeah. the paragraph. That looks about 19, yeah, 1960s. So it, it, it's, it's quite the thing when people start walking around because they had tunnels all through in here. And you used to be able to go from here to here to here through tunnels. And uh, they lift this stuff on the sidewalks where they used to deliver stuff. And it used to come down like you saw in New York. It was the same along here. And then they just started getting filling these undergrounds all in. No kidding. So yeah. what, what year did you arrive in New Westminster? Uh, probably 1985. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And, and so the first job you had was the liquidation job? Yeah. And how did you get that job? I owned it. Oh, you owned it? I've never worked for... The only thing... I, I came out here in 1979 and worked for the Coast Guard on the weather ships in Victoria. So that's when I started. I came out here for a visit and ended up liking it so much I stayed. And then I kept on opening. After I left there, after a couple of years, I started opening up my own businesses, you know, right from carpet companies to, to liquidation companies, and then got into uh, the comedy in 1997. Uh, my friend owned it and wanted me to uh, run it. And so I ran it for a year and said, I'm leaving, because he was the gentleman that, that uh, I couldn't do stuff I wanted to do. So I ended up buying it from him. Is that right? Yeah. And what was it that made that an interesting job for you, the comedy job? Uh, it was an enjoyable one. You know, and when you're down, you listen to comedy, it brings you back up. It, it, was, it was fun. Uh, it wasn't a full-time job. It was mostly, you know, four days a week, three to four days a week, and it was fun. Met and a lot of nice, uh, you know, stars and stuff. And, and as, so you are the owner of this place, though, right? Yes, then in uh, a few years back, when it came up for sale from the city, I ended up buying it. It took me a year and a half to uh, renovate it, and we're still renovating it, but uh, that we're going into our third year now. Uh, we moved laugh lines over, and we moved it upstairs. Uh, we call it the baby grand room, and downstairs is the grand room. But this was built in 1927 for an, as a 900-seat venue, uh, and it was huge, but everything was back then was huge. All the movie theaters had lots of seats. In 1975, they decided to twin it because they weren't getting enough people to fill the 900 seats. So they actually built a floor closer to the ceiling, which is the second theater. Anyways, they shut down in 1980. And after 1980, they put it up for sale, and the Elks bought it. And Elks is like a, uh, a group of people that get together, like the Legion, basically. And they bought the building. They fixed it up more and ended up uh, owing so many taxes. The city bought it off them about 10 years later. Uh, they made a little bit of money, but they were so far back in taxes, the city didn't want them to 
go under, so they ended up buying the building. And then the Burr Theater moved in. Then they lasted five years, shut down, and I ended up buying it. But when it first opened, it was a cinema? Yeah, it was a cinema. And it ran continually as a cinema? Yes, until uh, 1980. No kidding. This is the first uh, cinema, or theater, depends on which one I call it, that actually had air conditioning in Canada. Really? Yeah. It, you, you can walk downstairs, and it's still got the old piping that basically you could walk in. It was so huge. Back then, they thought bigger was better. They never had the, uh, the technology of the flow of it. You don't need that size. So they're still sitting there. Some of it's still being used, uh, but most of it's been uh, redone over to smaller venting that is the size that they, they need to push the air. So when you got hot in summertime in New West... This is the place to go. This, the this is a very unique, because a lot of the people come in here that used to come in here when they were younger. I mean, uh, some of the people come in here in their 80s, and the first thing I say to them, I says, oh, yeah, you were the couple in the very back necking. And they blush. The women would blush. And, and, they, and they say, well, how do you know? I says, well, for 25 cents, it was dry, dark, and a place to kind of make out. And they would get... Uh, you know, one one uh, uh, lady said no, and the husband goes, "Honey." Uh, so it's funny because every elderly person that comes in here all the exact same thing. Did you watch the movie? Uh, parts of it. <laughs> can you? None of them can remember what they saw. <laughs> it was a very unique place to come. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, since this is sort of a location-specific study, what what drew you to the water front? As I mean, you've been in New West for a while. What drew you personally to New Westminster and this side of town? Uh, I just liked it. It's a, it's, you it's like central. The um, it's a great place to live. Uh, it's it's quiet now. It's getting busier because we're in now the hub. This used to be what they used to call the Golden Mile because this was the only way to go through. They didn't have the uh, highway. The highway was built in the 60s, so this was the was the place you had to go through. Uh, now with the the highway being built, uh, it was cut, this was kind of cut off. So I mean, this used to be the capital also of BC, and they moved it to Victoria. Uh, I'm not sure what year, but. So back then, uh, this was the hub really? of, of all of Vancouver, basically. Oh, the place to be. It was the place to be. And it's coming back to the place to be. Uh, this was a small little town, kind of hidden, uh, that people didn't know about. And that's why it has never really developed. Uh, but in the last 10 years, there's been more development down here in downtown New West than ever. It mm -hmm. seems like it's just bursting. It's bursting. Uh, the waterfront uh, was uh, bought by the city. I think there's 10 acres down there, and they've redone most of it. There's still a portion they want to do more of, uh, but that is, I mean, it's gorgeous. It was just broken down logs before, and no one really wanted it. So the city ended up making a, a purchase with the, whoever owned it and has redone it into a park. Uh, and because the theater is here, it's, it's the place to be. Now, as far as the theater goes, what kind of uh, hours is it open? What kind, of, what kind of performances do you have? What kind of operating hours? Well, we operate, uh, we're here every day, but if somebody wants to come in here and rent, be here at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, we'll do whatever it takes. A lot of corporate people will do corporate meetings. Uh -huh. We'll serve them breakfast or, and lunch. And since we've got... Uh, uh, newer technology in the older place, you know, we've got screens, uh, uh, wireless internet, uh, anything a corporate person would need. So daytime, we try to do that. And then nighttime, it's a wide range of, of uh, materials that we put in here, or concerts we put in here. Uh, upstairs, what we call the baby grand room, is where Laugh Lines Comedy Club is. And mm -hmm. we have all sorts of comics. I mean, Ryan Stiles started here. Uh, Robin Williams has stopped by. So it's, it's, it's been around for 25 years, so a lot of people know a lot of stars can come through here that weren't stars when they first came through here. Uh, Brent Butt, who is a BC uh, uh, gentleman now, lives here. Uh, he, used to, he started here. I mean, he was a regular at Laugh Lines, and now he's, 
he's one of the ones that has gone on to be a, a star with uh, doing comedy and TV shows and movies. He's a brilliant guy. So it was a starter for a lot of places and is still around. But uh, down in the grand room is where we do uh, anything from uh, concerts to, to bands to burlesque shows to uh, magicians to the circus. It, it can be used for basically anything. We've had bar mitzvahs in, in here. It's, it's a unique place. As far as place to work here, what kind of staff do you have? What kind of, what kind of careers uh, are, are there? Uh, who works here? How big of a staff do you we have? We've got about 25 staff. Most of them are part-time because it's, you know, it's used when we're, where we're open. We try, to, we try to open up most nights if we can. Uh, and the staff, we just hire them when we need them. But we do have full-time staff. You know, one is the coordinator for the Columbia. He takes care of uh, all the bookings. You know, when we get it, he does all the contracts. And then we have a wedding coordinator because we do weddings Oh, no here. kidding. Oh, I mean, we had a wedding uh, just last month that, that the people were were in the theater, so this this was a, a very unique place oh, to come sure. into theater. Uh, I mean, just uh, uh, the wedding was so unique. Uh, just during their first dance, they um, ended up uh, some guy in the eye and said, "Whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop! How do I know she's good enough for you? I think she should be with me." And he oh, said, "Well, <laughs> what are we going to do about it?" So oh, we're going to duel. So they brought swords out from underneath the stage here, uh, real oh. swords but with dull edge, <laughs> because they took. Uh, that as a class. Uh, so they are pretending on the uh, dance floor, bang, 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 and forth, and, uh, and the groom got stabbed, you know, not really stabbed, oh, stabbed. Gosh. He fell back and sat in a chair, turned to his wife uh, and said, honey, now that we're married, you gotta take over. And she goes, you don't do things right. And the music changed to James Bond. She pulled out a gun, shot the guy and says, that's how you do things now. So it's a unique place to have a wedding uh, that's different. So we have bands at weddings. They can be right on the stage, the uh, head table. So weddings are a very big part of this. Oh and with the goodness. wedding row that we have here in New Westminster, uh, it's, a, it's the perfect place. Oh, right, place. because you have all these bridal shops Yes, here. it's do we call it bridal Do you work with row. your neighbor? I mean, do they tell try you, to. hey, I've got a wedding coming they, up? They know we're here. Um, uh, with about 18, I think, is different to hang. It's, it's hard to get them all to come in and, and view the place at once. Uh, so, But they know we're here, and they help out a little bit, yes. And uh, what makes someone a good employee for you? I, I assume flexibility is important? Flexibility is important, yes. Uh, most of the, the, the servers, uh, they have different jobs here and there, so we'll right. phone up, are you available this weekend? Are you available tonight? Whatever. So... We have a list of people, and they all are great waitresses or waiters, because we do both. Uh, they love working here because you, uh, people are always leaving happy. It's not like working as a nurse. Uh, it, right. It's, you're, you're smiling, and the people here uh, like to smile, laugh, or clap on a concert. It depends what we're watching. But our staff is the same way. Uh, the full-time staff is... Uh, uh, the coordinator for the Columbia is in theater. He teaches theater, so he works here part time, and he teaches theater on the other part right. of his job. So it's people who are interested in entertainment that work here, basically. Now, do you deal with any unions, or do you have any union issues? No union issues uh, whatsoever. Uh, union people do come in here. We uh, rent the place out for uh, movies that are actually making movies. Mm -hmm. So, and they're a union. Uh, most uh, unions now work in a non-union place. Uh, it just depends how they, they work it, that's all. But uh, no, we have no problem with the, the, the and union people coming in here. We're not big enough to be a union in here. Oh, so right, because usually it's not, some minimum. It, well, it's not a minimum. It's just not, it's not financially worth a, a union coming in here because... <laughs> The overhead here is so high that uh, I see what you're saying. And you're in an entertainment field. This is not a big money making uh, offer. Either. Offer here. Yeah. It's more uh, love behind yeah. it all. You have if to you, really love it. You have to really love it because if you didn't love it, uh, it this is never going to make a person rich. It's more having a job that you love. Right. And how about uh, safety issues? Do you have, have you ever had a bad accident here? None whatsoever. Really? And, and how do you, what, what, I guess, 
I don't see anything, I mean, other than the normal stage stage equipment and things like that. What kind of safety precautions do you have? Is it just you make sure you hire well-trained people, they know what they're doing? Yeah, or? I mean, we don't do pyrotechnics in here because we're not allowed to. Right. I mean, this whole place is, is uh, in 1975, they put... Uh, you're not uh, staging Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it, we, do, we do smaller theaters now, but uh, never had an accident on anything in here. You know, maybe a, 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 a scratch on a finger. That's about it. So we're quite lucky. But we don't do, the, the staff here doesn't, they don't do anything dangerously here. It's mostly just serving that the, the staff do. So we're lucky in that aspect. Yeah. Now, do you ever perform? Have you been a performer yourself? No. The closest I give is maybe announcing to performers. Uh, do I go on stage? Uh, no, they probably tell me to keep my day job. Really? Do you do you feel stage fright at all when you go up in no, front of people? None. And do you empathize with the performers when they feel it? Yes, because you know uh, a comic. That, that's why we do deal with three different comics that come on each night because you can't please everybody because everybody's got a different sense of humor. So we try to put different comics uh, that are talking about or joking about a completely different subject. So we try to please everybody here, and we normally do. We, we just a side note, we attended uh, one of your graduation performances after one of your comedy schools. Yes. Yeah, because we teach comedy. It here was too. fantastic. Yes. yes. I, I, was, I was so impressed by how far they came yeah. in such a short time, obviously. Everybody's got it in them, uh, stories. Everybody's right. got stories. And what we teach is to make that story humorous on how you present it to the people in the audience. And it, usually it takes about we, uh, six weeks is usually the course. And it's amazing it, what it they've was. done. It was. It was fantastic. We've, we've done seniors. And the seniors, I mean, their stories is, is what part of my body doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you know, we used to talk years ago who we were with. Now we talk about what parts of our body doesn't work. <laughs> so it's, it's, it doesn't matter what age group you are. It really is universal. Yes. As long as the audience will understand it. Uh, we had an ex-nun in here. She was funny. Uh, but when she talked about the nunnery, people couldn't relate. So it was hard for somebody to laugh at something when they don't understand it. But it was still funny because she was a very funny lady. Uh, but she couldn't talk too much about the nunnery part of it because people wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little further to go. Yes. Not that many people had a mother superior that they could... <laughs> That's right. So when a comic talks, uh, it's got to be the, a subject uh, that people will relate to. I can see that. Have you noticed a lot of change in technology in the time that you've been in the field? Uh, yeah. Yeah, quicker than I can keep up to it. Uh, really? We now uh, uh, hire people that uh, uh, do marketing, especially on marketing. They're companies that don't actually come in here, but they take care of the marketing, uh, Facebook and Twitter and where to put your advertising on Google. It, it, technology is moving so fast that uh, I can't keep up to it, and I'm, at the, I'm the one of the baby boomers, so it's hard for you know me to understand when my son was 12 years old he knew more about the computer than I did oh, so yeah. it's the, the the people we deal with in the newer technology are a lot younger eh, which is fine I mean I love a person who's younger and's got a, uh, more knowledge and I learn from that right right um, when you talk about your family how, how, how big of a family do you have are you married do you have kids uh, uh, I'm with my second and we have six kids Six kids, yes. no kidding. Yeah. What's the ages? It goes from 17 to 31. Wow. Yeah. And have any of them followed in your footsteps? Are they in a similar uh, field? My wife works here with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of my, and my, one of uh, my stepdaughters works here full time. And the rest of them have all worked here part time. Is that so right? Family, and, yes. And would you reckon, as an industry, would you recognize, recommend this as if a way you to love make it, a living? Yes. You can make a living out of it, but it's, it's more the love end of it. And trying to tell a young person that money is not the all-end be-all, it's, it, it's hard to tell. Even when I was younger, it was, it, money was the factor behind jobs. But you know, when you get older, you realize that's not the thing. That's and telling a younger person, it's tough when you, they want. It's, young people come in here and they want to start at the top. And it doesn't work that way, but it's like that out there everywhere. So uh, the one stepdaughter loves it here. Uh, she making big money. No, she's surviving 
yes, and she, once we get going, we're only going into our third year, and uh, the amount of uh, activity we've had in here is amazing. Have your children stayed in this geographic area? Uh, yes, all of them are here, right? Uh, most of them are right there in Surrey or Port Moody. Really? And so this, the, the waterfront area it has remained appealing to them? Yes, yes. And when you um, are, what little leisure time, it sounds like you work a lot of hours. Too much. Uh, do you get any leisure time at all? Before I ask the next question, do you get we, any leisure time? We try. Uh, and do you spend any of that on the water? Or near the water? Uh, <laughs> or looking at the water? <laughs> we try to get away, just to, uh, but it, it's tough when we're starting to build a business. In the first couple of years, uh, we said we will put our time into it and then uh, uh, try to get somebody to work it during the daytime and we'll work it at night because we love the... Yeah. Uh, uh, Where do you live? Uh, we live just across the, the water in Surrey. You do? Yes. And so very, how long is your commute? Ten minutes. Oh, really? So, so all of, pretty much all of your time is spent right here. Yes. Do you remember what your very first impression was of the waterfront of this particular stretch of land? Well, I'm from Ottawa, where there's no, we have canals. We don't have uh, or and a river. I've, I've never been there. It's it's beautiful. It's historic, uh, but out here, you you the beauty here is the mountains and the right. water. And so we try to stay close to that. Even when we go on vacation, it's usually some place where there's water. I feel the same way. No. I, feel exactly I mean, same. Vegas is a nice place to go, but there's no water. Right. Mexico, Florida, a little different. Yeah. And if you um, think back over, over the years, what is your like, fondest memory of working here or near here, of the, of the waterfront memories? Is there a season, a time of year that you think is the prettiest? Well, summer I like. I mean, we have a, we used to have a cabin up Indian Arm, which is one of the inlets. I mean, it's a boat ride, 25 minutes, and you're out in the wilderness. Uh, I sold that to, to basically buy this place here, so we don't have that anymore, but that was the getaway. Mm -hmm. uh, but we felt that this here was a, a good investment uh, and a challenge uh, to, uh, to the city and help the city. I mean, we bring more people down here to downtown New Westminster than any other company along here. I mean, Army Navy brings people, but uh, we're talking about people that are actually coming to, to see a performance. Uh, the restaurants around here uh, love me because they'll come and they'll eat first, uh, even though we do have a kitchen here. Uh, when they leave here, they might go to a pub down the street. So uh, the city knows that, and the people around here are appreciative and help me out wherever I can because I bring the people down here. Mm -hmm. And what was your, like, proudest association with New Westminster? I'm probably dealing with the city. The city was actually, you know, uh, the mayor, uh, the Honorable Mayor right here in town, uh, he's gone through, I don't know, like four or five elections in one of them. I think that's true. He has turned the city around and dealing with, dealing with uh, him and seeing his vision, uh, that's why I'm here. Most uh, cities don't have a vision uh, or a mayor that has that type of vision and actually works hard at it. He works harder than anybody. He's the first at the city hall, last one to leave. He's like me, and a passion like that's me. That's great. So that's why I like it here. And when were you the most concerned about the future of the city? I don't know about concerns. Uh, I kind of came in uh, and saw the, what people were doing, what the city was doing. So I didn't really have any concerns. I mean, there's always ups and downs. You know, it's like uh, the comedy. The city can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll talk to some people that don't like the, the, what's being built here and how the cities are doing it, as I say. But progress is progress. And I think what the city is doing, they're trying to keep the heritage here and keep the progress going. And when you look ahead, like the next 20 years or so, and you imagine the waterfront, what do you think it's going to look like 20 years from now? I think uh, the park is going to be completely finished. And there will be uh, condos uh, all on the waterfront, mm -hmm. uh, built into the way of, of the, the skyline of what is here. And it's going to be a vibrant town, mm -hmm. full of people. And downtown, I think, is going to be the, uh, 
entertainment uh, street uh, for New Westminster. And uh, is there anything I should have asked you about your business or about the waterfront that you'd like to say and I just didn't think of it? No, I think you got pretty well everything said basically what uh, the waterfront is. I mean, I mean, it's just gorgeous. I mean, the only thing that's left right now is to fill the parking lot, which they do have plans to, uh, to build down there. So the waterfront will kind of look like the inlet in uh, Vancouver where uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, they've designed different uh, condos and you go in those and you can walk around and bike or uh, go to the, the market down here. So it's once they get the finish in the waterfront, I think it is going to be the up-and-coming place where people can come and uh, enjoy themselves and bicycle and play basketball down there, mm -hmm. lounge at the I at love the water. that park. I think that's really it's, it's, it's fabulous. And I it's think, just I think you really had a vision. Oh, I know one of the areas I totally uh, seem to have missed over it had to do the general societal area of gender and race. Have you noticed a transition over the years in, in social attitudes in New Westminster or along the waterfront? Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's so many different nationalities here because Canada is, is, is a place to come for different nationalities. Uh, How about even in your comedy uh, stylings? You know, you, you have a real chance to see all kinds of people come across your stage. Do you notice your audience reacting any differently uh, or any different type of humor come across? Is it rawer or less raw? No, most, most comics... You know, some of them get kind of off the wall. There are, it's as a comic would say, it's harder to be clean than it is to be dirty. Is the mm -hmm. word. Uh, most of the comics are you know, middle of the range. Uh, the ones who do corporate, where is where the money is for comics, uh, they're a lot cleaner. Their jokes are are just related to cleanness, and not uh, uh, off the wall. You hear that uh, saying, or I don't know, I'm sure you've heard it, that women just aren't funny? It's, it's harder for a woman in the comedy industry to, uh, to be dirty. Uh, and there are very few good ones out there, but there are good ones. When, uh -huh. you, when you come across a comic, it's not just telling good jokes. It's the chemistry on stage. The, uh, you, either you have it or you don't. Right. Uh, and... But there are fabulous women comedy out there, but they're usually a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that get a little bit off the wall, uh, women don't like it. Right. And, and, it's, and it's tough. It's tougher to be a woman as a comic right. uh, as, than a man. But Who would you say are the funniest comics, male or female? right now. Oh, there's so many of them out there. and You can't say one because yeah, it's... Yeah, that's it's, tough. It's, it's kind of like choosing your favorite child. <laughs> yeah, it's it's because it depends what people like. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got a gentleman named Brad Upton. He's American. Uh, he's in his 50s. He can make a 90-year-old laugh or a 19-year-old laugh. Really? Because uh, he his humor is based in that range. Never swear. The subject is never dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hard to be, but he's he does a lot of corporate. Yeah. So he's one of my favorite. Is he big? No, but he makes a good living at it. You have somebody coming this week that I'm really looking forward to, Dave Foley. Oh, Dave Foley! I cannot uh, wait to one see one of Canada's him. premier uh, yeah. uh, actors. Yeah. Comedy. Oh. Uh, and he is. Uh, uh, I have never met him personally yet, but I know his comedy, and he's just got a new TV series coming out, kind of the uh, same as what it was when it was Kids in the Hall. So he's, oh, really? he's a he's a great actor and a yeah. great comic. He is. He he. I enjoyed him on news radio. Yes. Enjoyed him. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really looking forward to see him. But uh, yeah, the, it, it's hard to put your finger on something like that and saying who's funny because things touch different people's funny bones. Yeah. I mean, we've had Tommy Chong here, man, and uh, I think he's funny. He, he's he's I hilarious, but he's he, you funny. know he uh, he's. He's in the era of uh, the 60s with uh, all the marijuana. So his jokes are kind of around that. Yeah. Uh, and people enjoy it. But he has some great insights. Actually, he's actually pretty politically astute, to tell you the truth. Yes, and he's, you know, he's so down to earth. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's because he's smoked, but uh, he's, he is so down <laughs> yeah, to earth. way down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but most of the comics that come by here uh, are uh, are good comics. They're, they're, they're nice. Uh, the ones that come in and think they're big are the ones that uh, uh, are harder to get along with. But they're still good comics. Yeah. Uh, but a megastar to me is something like, in comedy, is like Carol Burnett. I've oh, met, absolutely. Uh, 
I was at in backstage downtown when we had her for the Comedy Fest, and she came off the stage crying, and I said to her, I said, Carol, what's wrong, what's wrong? She goes, I'm just so happy people still love me. Oh, how sweet. So that's, I call that a megastar. She's, she, oh, wow. Yeah. So Oh, I've watched her since I was in pajamas, yes. you know, footy pajamas, yeah. I think. What a, what a star. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a star. But uh, uh, as Steve Martin says, the hardest job in the world is a comic because a comic will tell a joke and it goes viral now. So they've got to write a new one. Right, right. It, it's constantly <laughs> writing, and it's, it's tough to be a comic. Uh, and you don't want to see the same comic all the time. Right. But you will come to see the same band because they love, oh, play that song right, again. Right, play that play song again. Play that song again. <laughs> So it, but don't it's, tell me that joke again. Yes, I already heard that. That's right, and and that's why it's so hard to have a, to be a comic. I would not want to be a comic. Not a chance. Yeah. Uh, but most comics are are brilliant. They're yeah. smart as a whip. Uh, you wouldn't want to be married one to one because you wouldn't uh, win an argument, yes. male or female, <laughs> because they're so quick on the draw. It's really true. It's yeah. it's it's a little bit of labor between the person, the the comic and the listener. You yes. know, it's it's a little bit of math almost, mental math. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Is there any anything else uh, you wanted to say or any? Uh, oh, I uh, I should ask you: Is there anybody else you think we should talk to? The mayor. <laughs> the mayor. That's a great, you know, I should. I, I don't know that anybody has, but that's a great suggestion. I, I definitely, he is uh, a gentleman that uh, would set some time aside and uh, talk about New West because he's just not a mayor. He's a person that has got his heart and soul into here. And uh, you can see how he, how he talks to people. He's, he's so friendly, and he just loves it here, and that's one of the reasons why he keeps on being mayor because he's people know it's not uh, just a job to him. Yeah, he he is really cuts a dashing figure. I see yes. I see him downtown all the time, yeah. and he really he he just really represents the city beautifully. Uh, well, great. Well, I thank you so much for your time, and I'm sure I'll sit home and listen to this and go, "Oh, I should have asked him that. Oh, I should have asked him that." So I well, mean, you can keep you asking me anything. I mean, stuff that we do here. I mean, with the bands and stuff, we we're trying to work with in the music industry uh, uh, with younger bands. We we do uh, uh, on Sundays jams, uh, two Sundays a month, and another two Sundays we actually do what they call a revival. It's either a blues revival or a um, um, country. And it's actual professional people come in. So uh, people from all different ages come down here and listen and dance. Uh, and then Wednesday nights, uh, we're starting a battle of the bands. So it doesn't okay. matter what age group you are, you can come. And if you win it, uh, it's a 16-week uh, process. If you win it, it's like uh, The Voice. You get all the benefits and uh, we do filming you, we do a track for you, uh, we try to wow. fix you up with different people to see if you can get farther ahead, because uh, there's so many good, great people out there, they just don't have the chance to uh, show their uh, performances. Yeah, it takes money, and so this will... Yes, it's, it takes to be good and to be lucky in this yeah. industry. It's yeah. not just being good, you've got to have a little bit of luck behind yeah, you. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Oh, you're very welcome.